There is a four-letter word that can be uttered in polite company that nonetheless evokes negative memories and unpleasant feelings. The four-letter word I refer to is pain. Try to remember the last experience you had with pain. Cutting yourself with a knife, stubbing your toe, bumping your head on a hard surface, or burning your hand in the kitchen. Remember the cringe-inducing trauma and your body's first reaction. You likely quickly pulled away from the source of the pain. You may have recoiled into a position to protect the injured body part from further injury. On some level, we all understand that pain is what physiologists and doctors call a protective mechanism, a warning sign that we are in physical danger. Religious sectarian philosophy often teaches that pain is the result of bad behavior. They teach that God inflicts pain on the sinner for his disobedience. Most of us simply believe pain is the result of a random experience that we hope to avoid. Since we all experience pain in our lives, we try to come to some understanding of why pain is so important. I recently had the misfortune, so I thought, to experience intense and significant pain. I was in the back country with a group of friends enjoying a Saturday of off-roading. I don't consider myself to be a risk taker even though I have ridden off-road motorcycles for years and without any serious mishap. This day I was enjoying being in the outdoors, not doing anything particularly daring. At one moment I was gliding down a dirt road with little concern in the world. The next moment I knew I had only enough time to prepare my mind for a collision when another rider suddenly appeared in my pathway, knowing there was nothing I could do to avoid the collision. My eyes focused on the front end of the four-wheeler directly in my path. There was no way I could know how the next hour would tax my mental and spiritual endurance to its limits. I felt a jarring thud and then my body tumbling through the air. My next awareness was of my right side striking the ground and my helmet-covered head bouncing off the hard pack. Being knocked unconscious would have been a welcome secondary effect, but that effect did not come. The next seconds became like hours when my right foot sent the message to my brain that it had been compressed between the side of the motorcycle engine and the metal frame of the ATV. I can only explain the sensation as the feeling of an elephant standing on my foot while 110 volts of electricity coursed from my toes to my heel while simultaneously feeling a metal rod being thrust through my instep. 
I writhed on the ground yelling out. I was aware that several of our group were quickly there to help, but they hesitated as I struggled and strained. Nausea began setting in, mixed with desperation, that something was seriously wrong with my foot. After a time, one of my friends, Ben, helped get me onto the back of his ATV and slowly rode me back to the car. He got me onto the back seat of the car and removed my right shoe and sock. I had a moment of slight relief with the pressure of my shoe being removed. I could see a large laceration on one side of my foot that rapidly dripped blood to the ground. Ben quickly bandaged up my foot and helped me all the way into the back seat. Moments later, we would be out on the highway for the 40-minute ride back to El Cajon and the emergency room. After only a few minutes of driving, I recognized that the pain was again driving me to desperation. I asked my friend David, sitting in the front seat, to lay his hands upon my head to use priesthood authority and power to give me the strength to hold out until we arrived at the ER. I was blessed that the time went by quickly and shortly David was helping me into a wheelchair at the entrance to the emergency room. The hospital personnel wasted no time getting me back into a bed. They asked a few questions and then approached my arm with the most welcome gift I can remember receiving in some time. An IV needle followed by an intravenous dose of Dilaudid which calmed my pain and my nerves. David was able to break the news gently to my wife on the phone. After my wife and brother arrived, the results of the x-rays would reveal five broken bones, including a compound fracture. I would be scheduled for a surgical procedure shortly, and it seemed the worst was behind me. Little did I know that the next few days would bring the additional development of completing a sequence of three rib fractures in my right back, which would send me back to the hospital with uncontrolled pain in the middle of the week. My injury and pain were not unique. There are many who have experienced worse than I. As I look back over the past two weeks, I've recognized something about this word pain. For me, I experienced pain as an instructor and a teacher. The pain I experienced humbled me. My pain removed the pretense of position or influence. My pain showed me that physical possessions have very little lasting value. My pain spoke in clear and plain language that I can depend on my family and my friends. Most importantly, my pain reminded me that God loves me, that he gave me life. and provided a redeemer to wipe away every tear. Whether those tears be caused by a physical malady, emotional turmoil, heartbreaking life event, or self-induced trauma, you and I have a choice. Embrace the pain that will inevitably come and accept it as one of life's teachers, or do as Job's friends urged, to curse God and die. I hope I never repeat the extremely painful experiences of my month of May. I am grateful God has preserved my life and blessed me with a good wife who has cared for me and so many good family members and friends who reached out to me with compassion. But if another painful episode waits for me around the next bend, I will be ready to be taught again. In the meantime, I'm resting more comfortably now. I am thankful for life joys and pains because they are both part of the refiner's fire. The hammer and the anvil that will shape me into what God would have me be.